Welcome to TV 16's Live at 5. I'm Kaylee Evans. And I'm Katie Clement. Schools in Searcy are back in session after this weekend's wintry weather. And Little Rock Police are investigating a deadly shooting that occurred last night. We'll have all that for you and more. Your TV 16 News starts right now. This week's winter storms closed schools across Arkansas, including Harding University. Even though Harding students were dismissed from class, a couple hundred prospective high school students braved the wintry weather to visit this campus. On Monday, Harding University Director of Public Safety Craig Russell says the snow and ice did cause some problems, but everything went smoothly for the visitors. We are working to try to make sure that uh, we're, we're doing everything that we can to make sure that those students have a good visit and they, they are able to see Harding and see what Harding is all about. Uh, they had chapel and they have programs that are ongoing and many faculty who were able to safely come in have done so. Uh, so we have something here for them even though uh, the school itself is, is shut down. What we do typically in public safety is uh, we drive around and make sure that the roads are safe and that the sidewalks around campus are safe and then we we report up and it's up to Dr. McClarty whether or not school will be in session. The Harding University Admissions Office says about 200 prospective students and their families visited this campus Monday. And power outages are remaining minimal in White County. The Intergy Arkansas Customer Service Manager says there have only been two reports of power outages in White County since Monday. And these two outages are suspected to have been due to a breaker. However, Intergy says other areas of the state have not been as fortunate. On Tuesday, 15,000 customers were without power due to shortages in Montgomery, Clark, Drew, and Pike counties. In addition to power outages, the weather conditions have caused several vehicle accidents. Since Monday, the Searcy Police Department has responded to nine accidents due to the icy roadways. Though no injuries have been reported, Sergeant Steve Hernandez urges drivers to be cautious, saying even less than an inch of snow or sleet can be dangerous. A Searcy restaurant is making some changes. Doc's Grill on BB Caps is now the Rock House. Rock House manager Craig Robinson says even though the restaurant may be different, a few menu items and elements of Doc's will stay the same. We've definitely got some new menu items. There's a few menu items that were popular at Docks that we've kept on the menu. Uh, we've still got our steaks and seafood, those kind of things, but then we've also now got, uh, you know, a build your own burger option. We've got some tacos, flatbread, so just a few things like that, uh, more value-oriented uh, options as well. This is just an all-American, you know, restaurant. Uh, we've definitely tried to make it a more fun place to eat, you know, uh, appealing to all groups and uh, you know, whether you're a, a business worker, a student, a blue collar worker, we want everybody to come in and just feel welcome and feel like it's a fun atmosphere and environment place to eat. The Rock House is located on BB Caps and is now open for business. Cursive writing could be making its way into White County schools. A bill that would require all schools, districts, and Arkansas to teach cursive by the end of the third grade passed in the House last week. Some school districts in White County, including Searcy's, currently do not require the teaching of cursive because it is not a common core requirement. If the bill becomes law, the Searcy and Bald Knob school districts would have to incorporate cursive into their curriculum. Little Rock police are investigating a fatal shooting. The shooting occurred yesterday evening at a motel on Scott Hamilton Drive. One man died and three others were injured in the incident when police say they found 24-year-old Michael Strickland shot in the head in a, hotel room they, in a hotel room. They also found 22 shell casings scattered across the parking lot. Police say three shooting victims were treated at UAMS yesterday after driving themselves to the hospital. Calvin Williams, Colon McGee, and Jamie Clayton were all treated for gunshot wounds. Clayton was later taken to the Pulaski County Jail and faces charges of possession of cocaine without intent to deliver and other drugs and weapon charges. And two Little Rock women escaped injury last week when they were robbed at gunpoint. The 23-year-old and 30-year-old were walking to their car in the parking lot of the West IMAX Theater when two men approached them. 
They say one of the men pulled out a handgun and ordered them to give him their belongings. After they gave over their purses, the suspects ran from the scene. The suspects are described as two black men. One was wearing a blue jacket and a blue beanie and stood about five foot eight. The other suspect was described as wearing a red bandana and stood at about five foot nine. The victims say the suspects ran from the scene headed south. Malvern police are investigating a deadly shooting. Late Monday night, an intruder shot and killed Jason Stovall. His girlfriend, Heather Darter, was critically wounded. Darter's seven-year-old daughter made the 911 call, and Darter's two other children were in the home at the time of the shooting. If you have any information regarding this case, please contact the Malvern Police Department. And West Memphis police are investigating a possible homicide after a body was found this morning. Police arrived on the scene early this morning after receiving a call from a motorist who reported seeing a body just east of Bill's Grill Road. The body is being sent to the Arkansas State Medical Examiner's Office for an autopsy and identification. Until more details are understood, West Memphis Police Captain Joe Baker says the incident is being ruled as a homicide investigation. Anyone with further information regarding this incident is asked to call the West Memphis Police Department. A Missouri man is in custody after fleeing to Arkansas. Willie D. Clark was taken into custody in McGee, Arkansas on Tuesday by U.S. Marshals. Clark was involved in a shooting in February, on February 13th where two were killed and a third was left injured. Clark is charged with two counts of first-degree murder, three counts of armed criminal action, and one count of first-degree assault. And the cause of death of a Conway man who is waiting for trial has been released. Police say Barry Sicklin had a mix of mor morphine, amphetamine, muscle relaxer, and anti-anxiety medications in his system when he was found dead in his parents' home. Sicklin was charged with first-degree battery after authorities say he was driving and hit a Conway police officer and Searcy native Will McGeary, who was directing traffic last January. Sticklin's attorney says he has been taking the medication found in his system since he has returned from Iraq as a combat veteran. A North Little Rock father delivered his newborn son in his car during Monday's ice storm. David and Lauren Adamski's baby was not due for another two weeks when Lauren started to go into labor. As they were headed to the hospital, Lauren said she could no longer wait. David then pulled the car over. He says he remembered what the doctors did when his daughter was born and then delivered their son. Shortly after the baby was delivered, they arrived at the hospital. Their newborn son, Brennan, weighed in at 6 pounds and 10 ounces. Coming up after the break, this week's White House Summit is following countering terrorism. But first, let's take a look at your weather with Alexis Jewell. Alexis? Thanks, Kaylee. As I'm sure you've noticed, we've had a lot of ice and snow the past few days. But whether you enjoyed your snow days staying in or going out, I hope you enjoyed your taste of winter. We have some more cold temperatures coming in. We have a winter advisory for Friday. More information on that coming up after the break. Kids will spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Hey! Ready to go? Yeah, but the fire's not out. Close enough. Huh. Close enough? If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. I, I mean, the next thing you know, you've torched our whole neighborhood. Which is why we're not going anywhere? Exactly. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, She's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Oh, 
Oh, sweetheart. Can I give you a hand? No thanks, Dad. I got it. Okay. I'm gonna go fix the lamp in your room. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. And we're back from the break with your TV 16 weather. The current temperature right now is 32 degrees, but it feels a little bit colder than that because we have winds coming in from the northwest, so it feels more like 21 degrees. The average high for today was 37 with an average low of 10. So we weren't close to breaking any records, although we probably wish we were, wishing for some warmer weather, because it's a record of 76 in 1986, and the record low for today was 2 degrees in 1936. Now looking at your temperatures across the state, like usual, it's a little bit colder in the north than it is in southern Arkansas. Looking at the mid-20s in the northern Arkansas with 25 degrees in Fayetteville. If you go down to Little Rock, we're up at 37 degrees. And then if you go down to Texarkana, it's all the way up to 48 degrees. Looking at your national weather, as you can see, we have colder temperatures coming through. And we're definitely feeling those colder temperatures. And if you look at the chart, we have temperatures that are colder all across the state. Um, last week where we had 80 degrees in Southern California, it is now in the mid-60s to low-70s. And also if you look in the North Midwest, we have temperatures that are in the negatives. For your forecast for tonight, it's going to be clear with an, a high of 10 degrees. And we have no chance of snow for tonight. And tomorrow is the Chinese New Year. Tomorrow is going to be partly cloudy with a high of 31 and a low of 15. We're also expected to have some strong winds. If you look at our snowfall that we've had the past few days across Arkansas, um, Harrison had the most snowfall in Arkansas with five inches. Then if you look at Little Rock, they had about two inches. Here in Searcy, we had about a half an inch, so not too much for us. And then Conway had the least amount, which was, in, it was 0.1, so they didn't get that much. But um, we had quite a few school cancellations. And now if you look at our five-day forecast, we have some colder temperatures coming in. Friday is going to be cold, and we have a winter advisory for Arkansas. We're not expected to get hit with too much of that, but it is going to stay around uh, freezing. So we should get some freezing rain, which is an 80% chance. Then if you go to Saturday, we're going to warm up. We have a high of 62 degrees. We also have a 100% chance of precipitation, so we're expected to see some storms. But after that unusually warm day, the temperatures are going to get colder again. We're looking at 44 degrees on Sunday and partly cloudy. Then if you go to Monday, it's also going to be partly cloudy with a high of 38. And then Tuesday is going to be sunny with 46. So we have some varying temperatures coming in, but we, all, we are still going to get some more winter weather on Friday. But we won't be too worried about that here in Searcy. And that's it for your weather on TV 16. Now back to the news desk. Thanks, Alexis. The White House is in the middle of its three-day summit focused on countering violent extremism. It comes as the president waits for Congress to approve his request seeking military authorization to fight ISIS. CNN reports the meetings are about attacking the root of radicalization. Community and law enforcement leaders are coming together in Washington this week. It's the summit to fight violent extremism. The administration cautions the meetings are not limited to discussing threats posed by ISIS in the Middle East, but more about attacking the root of radicalization, a community-based push. It has to be about more than just countering violent extremism. We have to have a dialogue across a range of issues. The threat of terrorism was made newly relevant after recent attacks in Western Europe, Australia and Canada. Missing from the summit, the words Islamic extremism. That's feeding the debate about what to call the threat. Some Republicans are arguing Muslim-aligned radicals should be addressed directly. It's about an understanding of who the adversary, who the enemy is. And it seems like in many cases the administration has, a, has turned a blind eye willingly. The White House says it needs to be careful not to elevate terrorists into religious warriors. Extremism has taken a variety of forms in this country in a way uh, that has had violent results. Uh, and... Uh, you know, we want to be focused on making sure that we're countering all of that. Summit attendees get to hear from the president twice. He gives a keynote address today and addresses a group of foreign ministers at the State Department tomorrow. Reporting in Washington, I'm Polo Sandoval. The sister and brother-in-law of the man accused of killing American sniper Chris Kyle and his friend Chad Littlefield took the stand today. 
Laura Bev Blevins and Rauf's brother-in-law Gaines Blevins sat right, say Rauf told them that he shot two people and traded his Kia Seal for Kyle's pickup truck. A lifelong friend of the Rauf family who has known Eddie for 27 years also took the stand today. Kyle and Littlefield were killed at a gun range in Erith County, Texas two years ago. And new details are emerging in the case of a Nevada woman killed in a road rage incident. CNN reports police say the victim and her son pursued the suspect following an initial encounter, possibly escalating the situation. Overnight, continued grief and outrage from the family of Tammy Myers. She never did nothing bad to anybody. Myers, a 44-year-old mother of four, police say shot in the head in her own Las Vegas driveway after a road rage incident with this man. His car caught on surveillance video, and this morning the manhunt continues. She was encountered uh, by a vehicle that was speeding up rapidly behind her. Police say Myers was giving her 15-year-old daughter driving lessons in this parking lot. When Myers got behind the wheel in the neighborhood, the suspect sped up behind them and pulled to one side. That's when her daughter reached over and honked the horn. Right or wrong, she beeped the horn. Police say the driver then got out of his car and said something that, quote, frightened Myers and her daughter, and the two then sped away. What happens next may have escalated the situation. Mrs. Myers is scared, but she's upset. According to police, Myers returns home to pick up her 22-year-old son, Brandon, who grabs his gun, heading off together in pursuit. The vehicles and persons found each other. Myers followed the suspect before eventually breaking off and heading home. That's when police say the suspect appears as she's exiting the vehicle, firing a volley of rounds at Myers, the son firing back evidence of the exchange of fire in a nearby wall. My son is a hero in my book. There was mistakes made like every one of us have made in our life, but this particular mistake was made to keep a bigger mistake from happening. And my wife paid the ultimate price for it. Her case an extreme example of the potential danger of rage on the roads. Sarah Seidner, CNN, Los Angeles. A university in Pennsylvania is receiving criticism after accidentally sending out acceptance letters. CNN reports 800 students received the email and a follow-up email explaining the error. There is a certain awareness among those enrolled at this illustrious Pittsburgh institution. Carnegie Mellon University, renowned for its groundbreaking research in pioneering technology. Its computer science program ranked number one in the country by U.S. News & World Report. It's definitely a tough program. Um, you hear a lot about it. We're known for it. <laughs> Hundreds who strive to be among its ranks experienced elation, followed by agony, after the university sent out 800 acceptance emails by mistake. Applicants who were wrongly told they got into its Masters of Science program. Yeah, no, I think that just makes it worse because it's such a prestigious school, especially like the computer science in general, and it has such a low acceptance that it's even like an even bigger fall. If I like got like that rush of happiness with the acceptance letter and then like immediate like they tell me oh no that was a mistake that would definitely be really something that I wouldn't be able to handle. The email read in part quote congratulations on your acceptance into the Masters of Science program. You are one of the select few less than 9% of more than 1200 applicants that we are inviting. A few hours later another email explaining the error. The reaction on social media was swift and passionate, budding computer scientists saying their souls were crushed, their futures erased. No one is perfect, right? Like, no university is perfect. University officials declined an on-camera interview, but wrote in a statement that they are deeply apologetic. An Australian father and son sailing around the world are now back on land after a rescue mission over the weekend. The father and son team had to be rescued from the water after battling the blizzard that hit the northeast United States. CNN reports the two said they were supposed to end up on a warm island. Like a toy, the Sedona bounced in the waves churned up by the weekend blizzard. The Coast Guard scrambled to save Australians Jason and Reg McGlesian, who you see getting out of the basket. This is the father and son team now. We love them. <laughs> They're sporting hats from the Coast Guard unit that plucked them from their boat Sunday, 150 miles south of Nantucket. We did check the weather. Um, also had the Coast Guard come out and talk to us as well. And, and they said, oh, you're going to Bermuda, not a problem. 
uh, this boat will outrun the weather. Jason bought the 43-foot sailboat for $10,000 off eBay. He came to Rhode Island two months ago, repairing the Sedona and making her ready for the trip back to Australia. Took it out. Everything was working great. Jason, an experienced sailor, and Reg, who was on the trip at his wife's request, were ready for their first international boating excursion. It was about 24 hours in when things started to slowly go wrong, and at the end, everything skyrocketed. They lost power to the autopilot, and the storm ensnared them. The boat did almost get put on its side by two big waves, and that's the main reason that we, we left the boat. Once Coast Guard arrived, rescuers battled the elements. Rescue swimmers put the men into baskets, lifting them into the helicopter. We looked down and thought, crushed, that's rough. Jason still plans to pursue his dream of sailing the oceans. His father says he will stay on land. <laughs> About the same as normal. <laughs> And now let's take a look at today's sports with Tyler Nutt. What's going on today, Tyler? Thanks, ladies. Coming up in sports, more Harding track records are being set. Keep it here. It's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Uh, I don't know what's happening. Start a new check. What did I do? Okay. Wow. That is so weird. Hey! Hi! Hi! Oh my gosh. Hi! God, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm so nervous. Gia, you're so big. Come closer to the camera. <laughs> Wait, now you're in my face. Bye. That was so good. Harding women's track runner Ava Zaborowska is named NCAA Division II Runner of the Week. The honor came after she won the 3,000 meter at the Sanford Invitational. Division II indoor track records are incomplete but it's believed that her time of 9 minutes and 23 seconds is an NCAA Division II record. Sophomore pole vaulter Trey Atkinson defeated 22 other competitors to win the event championship in the pole vault. For the first time in his career, Atkinson cleared 15 feet 5 inches, the top performance by a Harding pole vaulter in the NCAA era. He became the first bison ever to reach the NCAA provisional standard. Atkinson is now tied for second in the Lone Star Indoor Track Conference in pole vault, entering the conference meet. The Lady Bison softball team had six games scheduled this weekend at Arkansas Monticello Softball Classic. Sunday's games were canceled, so the Bisons played only four of the games. On Friday, the Lady Bisons fell to Truman State 1-0 and to number 18 in Poria State 4-2. On Saturday, the Lady Bison split a pair of games, defeating Nebraska Kearney 15-2 and losing to William Jewell 5-4. Up next, the Lady Bison's open conference play this weekend on the road against Southern Nazarene. The Harding Bison's baseball team lost two out of three in a series against Henderson State this weekend. Colin Campbell pitched an eight-inning shutout, allowing only three hits in Friday's game to lead the Bison's to the 3-0 victory. On Saturday, the Bison struggled on defense, losing their first game 10-3 and their second game 5-4. Up next, the Bisons host Washita Baptist this weekend for a two-game series. The men and women's basketball teams are on the road this week to face Southern Nazarene. The men enter the game with a 12-10 overall record and 10-6 in the Great American Conference. 
The Bisons are tied with East Central for second in the conference standings and have clinched one of eight spots in the GAC tournament in Batesville. Oklahoma, uh, Batesville, Oklahoma. The Lady Bisons are 13-3 and three in the GAC and sit in second place in the conference standings. They are one game behind Arkansas Tech, who has a 14-2 and two GAC record. Ladies also have sealed a spot in the GAC tournament. And that's all for sports. Now back to the desk with Kaylee and Katie. Ladies. Thanks, Tyler. Coming up after the break, a look at Washington, D.C.'s annual snowball fight. And animals in China are dressing up for the new year. Stay with us. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now, are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Then, no lo puedo hacer. GMC, life in your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb, just keeping it real. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. So good to see you guys. So, what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... Mm -hmm. oh. Was it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. And now, another adventure with Savings Man. Look, honey, the neighbors just bought a big screen TV. Hey, I just got a bonus at work. Maybe we should get one, too. Hold on there. Savings Man. Using your bonus to secure your future by paying down debt or saving is a better way to go. Well, I declare you're right, Savings Man. Stay ahead by choosing to save. And don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. But their name is Johnson. For more tips and tools, visit choosetosave.org today. Healing takes time. It also takes knowledge and expertise. Here we learn to reach out to and care for others through the application of medicine and true compassion. We understand that our mission is to take our training and abilities out into the world where they can and do heal the lives of others. For us, that mission began in a place of faith, learning, and living. Harding University. It's been more than 20 years since the death of Dr. Seuss, but that's not stopping him from publishing a new book. Random House plans to publish What Pet Should I Get in July. Dr. Seuss's widow and secretary discovered the story in 2013 while they were cleaning up his office space. Random House says it believes Dr. Seuss wrote the story in the late 50s or early 60s. Two more Seuss books featuring newly discovered material will be published at a later date. Washington, D.C.'s epic snowball battle, a lantern show, and an animal's dress to impress for the new year. CNN has today's Take a Look at This. Take the American way! Take a look at this. Usually it's a war of words in the nation's capital, but when there's snow, words go out the window. Frigid temperatures couldn't keep those bent on battle from taking part in the annual D.C. snowball fight. And while the snow wasn't ideal for snowball making, that didn't deter the participants from having an icy bit of fun, flinging handfuls of the fluffy stuff at the enemy. The Lunar New Year falls on February 19th of this year, and several cities across China are already starting to celebrate. Numerous lantern shows have been staged, highlighting the beauty and elegance of the Chinese tradition. At this festival, hundreds of visitors show up each year to view the unique lanterns arranged in a multitude of shapes, from exotic animals to elaborate landscapes. It's not just people getting ready for the Lunar New Year. There are a few merrymakers of the furry kind. These penguins in a northern Chinese province were dressed in the traditional red to greet the coming spring festival, but they were no match style-wise for these two friendly mascots at a Thailand resort. 2015 is the year of the goat, after all. For Take a Look at This, I'm John Fricke. Thanks for watching Live at 5 for all your news, weather, and sports. And remember, you can watch us anytime, anywhere on the link at streaming.harding.edu. Have a great night.